Hey, there it is, guys. Wow, look at that. I'm, I, I think I'm on the wrong channel again. Is that even right? <laughs> Welcome to BridgeCom live streaming. BridgeCom BCU, what is this called? BCU Live, BridgeCom University Live. That's what this is called. I don't even know where I'm at today. Uh, I'm Jason, KC5HWB. I run a channel on YouTube called Ham Radio 2.0. So for those of you who don't know me, thank you for joining today. We're going to talk about how to get a DMR ID and how to set up a local channel on your DMR radio. So as I've said on my channel several times, I honestly legitimately believe that this radio, this HT, this Anytone HT is the like the best radio made for ham radio in the the best DMR radio made for ham radio today. It is packed full of features. It's it's features that ham radio operators have requested and asked for if you saw the first renditions of the any tone radios they were mono band uh they only held 50 or 100,000 contacts and progressively they've updated to this latest model the uv2 plus and it's this is the one that i carry myself it's the one with the green button on top that's the latest version i've got the other the previous version with the blue button on top you can't really tell them apart besides that those two small features but that's um that is really Really good, uh, really good HT here. So I'm reading through the chat. Do I have echo? I shouldn't have echo because there's nobody else in the stream with me. So it should be okay. Let me know if how the audio sounds, guys. I always ask that anyway. So maybe that's it. Okay. Uh, let me know if that's any better right there. So yeah, I am. Um, Lisa says she's not seeing the live stream. Well, I'm seeing it. So no echo, Aaron. Thank you very much. Okay. I don't know. Somebody said something about an echo. Sounds good to hear. Sounds good to me. Okay. Hey, Don's lock. Don's locks is in the chat. Thanks for being here, guys. Okay, good. Thanks. I just wanted to check. <laughs> I've never done this. This is my first time to be on YouTube, guys. I have no idea what I'm doing. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we're going to talk today about getting your DMR ID. Basically, the only thing you need to get a DMR ID is a call sign. So once you get your call sign the first time, uh, your first call sign, you get an upgraded call sign, get a get a vanity, whatever. Once you get a brand new call sign, you can go to radioid.net and request a DMR ID, DMR ID which is seven digits. Um, it's going to usually start with a 3-1, and then it's going to be five other digits after that. 3-1 means, well, okay, let me, let me clarify. In the United States, it's going to start with 3-1. If you're in another country, it'll start with something else. 3-1 is for the USA. So... Uh, so you can just go to radioid.net and guys, y'all can put the screen up there now if you want to. And there we go. This is what it looks like. Now I'm logged in right here and you can see, uh, I'm on the, I'm on the, I'm on the front screen here. This is really cool stuff because it tells you today there were two, 23 new DMR IDs issued today, two new NXDN IDs and one new repeater ID. And that's just today. You can see we have a global network of 218,562 DMR IDs. Some people ask me sometimes, they're like, hey, why do I need 500,000 contacts in this radio? Because, you know, it's not, uh, or 300,000, 500,000, why do I need so many contacts in this radio? Well, it's because this database is constantly growing. So right now we have 218,562 IDs. That number will change tomorrow. It's updated every night at midnight UTC, I think. I don't remember the exact time, but it's updated once a day, usually at midnight in some time zone somewhere. And uh, it's constantly growing. So that's why you want more IDs. But this is this is where you would go, radioid.net. You can create an account. And I should I should have said this up front. This is all free. It doesn't cost you anything. So you don't have to pay for an ID. You don't have to pay for a repeater ID. You don't have to pay for a subscriber ID for yourself. You need a seven-digit subscriber ID for yourself. And generally speaking, when you apply, they give you two. And the thinking behind that was that you would use one in your HT and one in your mobile radio. You don't have to do it that way. That was just kind of how it started, and it's just kind of kept that way ever since day one. So you, you will be issued two IDs. You can see I have two DMR IDs right here. And right there. So my DMR IDs is 31480062 and 31481441. And I typically, and it says right here that these are both mobile, but that's actually not accurate. I mean, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the 31481441 ID is what I use for. In fact, I can, I guess I can change that. 
they've made some updates to this. They're very good about making updates to this website. It's not like they put it up three years ago and forgot about it. There's updates here almost every time I log in. I don't log into it every day, but there are updates that are made to it regularly. So you can go through here and you can request a new DMR ID. If I log out here, let's see. Since I'm logged in, it's kind of, yeah, since I'm logged in here, let's log out. Okay, and let's let's sign up is what you would hear do here. Now, once you got to read all this stuff where they ask you to read all this stuff. Okay, so and this information right here is very important. Okay, DMR repeater ID, NXDN ID, and capacity plus IDs are all available after you register your account. There is no need to create a new account to register as a repeater as a separate account. Simply create your primary account under your call sign. Make sure you upload a copy of your amateur radio license, then contact support and ask for allocations for repeaters, NXDN, Capacity Plus, et cetera. Capacity Plus are very limited in supply. You need a pretty good reason to give us one. Contact support if required. So it says, I will not read below carefully. Register a new call sign when I already have an account, DMRID. Okay, I will not register a repeater that's under its own account. And I will not register on this site unless I'm a licensed amateur radio operator with a government-issued Amateur radio call signs. So they had some problems uh, two or three years ago. It's been a while back now where people were registering under a false ID. I guess they, you know, there's just some trolls out there. So now that they, and I don't know the whole story behind that, but now they require you to upload a copy of your call sign. Okay. So when you do that, I'm not going to do this because they just, they said, don't do this. Don't, don't create a new account. Okay, fine. Uh, call sign, call sign, but not a robot. They used to have a link in here that would tell you, let's see. No GMRS. Okay, no GMRS. They used to have a link that would tell you how to download a copy of your call sign from the FCC ULS. If you just Google FCC ULS, you can log in there and look at and look up your own call sign and download a PDF file of your license. You should already have your FRN number because you're now required to, to register register for an FRN and present it to the VEC when you go for your first test or for your upgrade. So you should already have your FRN number, which is how you log into the ULS. If you don't, you can reset the password and set up your, your email address and everything like that. But once you have all of that, you just go through here, you, you enter your call sign, your email, your password, and your country territory, and then you, you sign in like that. And it'll create an account for you, send you an email, get you to authenticate it like normal. And then I just log in here like this. And it comes up like that. And then there'll be a link down here for, yeah, see status is approved right here. Amateur license verified. That means I've uploaded my license. Email is verified, approved. This won't show up as all approved at first. You might have to wait a day or two before the website updates and they process, because all of these, uh, there's a team of admins at Radio ID and they all look at your license when you upload it, the PDF file. So it's not done by computer. It's not a robo thing. Uh, they all do it live by hand. At least last time I spoke to them, that was still true. So you can go in here and then there'll be a link for register ID when you are new. And because I don't have that right now because I don't have, because I already have two IDs, but it'll be on this page when you have it and you can register for an ID. And generally speaking, once once all once your license is approved and once all of this shows green right here, your license is verified, the, uh, the privacy consent is yes, the email is yes, the status is approved. Once all of this is green on this page right here, if you wait to request an ID until all that's green, it should just automatically populate for you. You can almost get it immediately. Some people create an, an account and that's not all green yet and they request an ID and then it takes time and, and for that to all get verified and then they'll issue you, you an ID. So it just depends. Again, it's a manual process done on the back end that you don't see. Uh, the, the team at radioid.net is very good at keeping uh, the website updated, very good at answering questions and whatnot like that. So radioid.net is where you want to be if you're registering for a new DMR ID, which again is um, free to do. All right, so Bridgecom Systems in the chat, the person typing on that account, uh, 
there are giveaways today. They're giving away one of these radios today. I should have said that up front. Again, this is my first time on YouTube, so I apologize. Uh, I should have said this up front. They are doing a giveaway. They do a giveaway every week. If you guys don't know that yet, you haven't been here very long. And that's okay. Welcome. If you're new to the channel, welcome. So they're giving away one of these HTs. We're going to draw a winner in about 20 minutes at the bottom of the hour. And uh, that's where that will be done. And it'll be, I think you have to be present to win. So if you've signed up, follow the link in the chat that they just put in the chat. Make sure you sign up and then stick around until the winner is announced somewhere towards the bottom of the hour. So, all right. Now, to set up, and if you guys have chat, uh, I'm sorry. If you have questions, you can put them in the chat. We are going to do a Q&A towards the end. Okay. So this is not, this uh, this information that I'm presenting today is not very complicated. So I, I assume it'll pretty go pretty quick. So we'll see how that goes. But if you do have questions, please do post them in the chat. There's uh, there's guys watching on the back end to kind of keep keep that going. Uh, can you say again why you would need more than one DMR ID? Yes. Yeah, jo uh, Johan is correct. One for HT and one for mobile. Now, you don't need two of them, really. Okay, they issue you two of them by default. At least they used to. That's how they used to do it. I'm pretty sure they still do that that way. You can go in there and remove If you're not using one, if you don't want a second ID, you can go in there and remove it. Just go delete it. And if you want more than one ID for whatever reason, you can go request it. They may or may not grant that to you, but they, you can, you can definitely request it. So at the beginning, I don't think it works this way much anymore, but at the beginning... A DMR ID was kind of like an IP address. So if you had two HT radios, I don't have the second one right here. If you had two HT radios with the same ID and you keyed up on one, the second one wouldn't hear it because the system would recognize that your ID is transmitting, the repeater, the hotspot, whatever, and it wouldn't it wouldn't allow it to, to, to be heard. I pretty much think that's not the case anymore because I have heard myself talking when I have the same ID programmed to two different radios. It's possible I have like more than eight or 10 DMR radios. Don't tell my wife, but, uh, <laughs> but I don't really think that's the case anymore. But the idea of two DMR IDs came from the fact that they didn't think that the same ID could talk to the same ID. If you had the same ID programmed into more than one radio at a time. Again, I don't think that's the case anymore, but they still do issue you two IDs, one for mobile, one for HT. Um, so uh, a couple of people are in there saying I only have one ID. Okay. So maybe that's changed. I have two IDs. You see, you saw it on my page there, and I didn't request two IDs. That's just what they gave me. But I was an early adopter. I've been in DMR since like 2013, 2014, somewhere in there. So how do you meld local Seabridge repeaters, et cetera, with the ultra code plug, which I find useless until I tan QTH Houston? Oh, well, you, you just have to manually enter your own local repeaters into the code plug. So all, all code plugs are editable. So, okay. Yeah. So I'm being told it's only one ID. Now they're limited on IDs and they only issue one. They said that that might happen early on, but now it's only one ID. Okay. So I apologize. It used to be two. Now it's one, but the point is that you can still get one for free and, and get on DMR. I'll see it, Keith. I'll see if I can find that real quick. That link for the uh, for the FCC ID. Um, so your local talk groups are generally speak. Now, let me say this: the best way to get information because the the other part of today's live stream was about how to program a local talk group into your radio. Okay, so local talk groups are generally speaking they're either talk group two or talk group nine. Sometimes talk group ten. There's a couple of other there's a couple of other talk groups that could be used for local. The best thing to do is to contact your local repeater owner. And the cool thing about Radio ID is that you can log in and you can look up by call sign, you can look up people and find their subscriber ID so that you can add that to your code plug if it's not there already. And you can also find repeater information. Okay, so if you know that there's a repeater near you, say in the town next to you and you know that repeater's call sign you can look up that repeater's call sign on radio at d.net and find contact information for the repeater owner you can also look up the call sign on qrz and find email addresses for repeater owners assuming they've updated their information on qrz 
So I would do my best to try to look up the repeater that you want to talk on. If you want to talk on a local talk group on a repeater, I would look up that information on radioid.net, reach out to the repeater owner and say, hey, what's the local talk group? It might be listed. If they've updated their information on radioid.net, it might be listed there. In fact, I can probably look up one of my repeaters real quick here. If I want to do this, let's do this real quick, guys. Thanks for switching back. Let's see, DMR re repeater ID. This is obviously, that's my call sign. Okay, boom. Details. Okay, Corpus Christi for the town. Let's go to Richland Hills here. Okay, that one's not there. Of course it can. Okay, so if... If the, re if the repeater owner has done this correctly, and this is up to the repeater owner, you can go to radioid.net, look up the repeater, the repeater call sign, and click on details, and it should show time slot one, time slot two, like this one right here, time slot two, group call local two, metro local. Uh, we, we used to have a talk group called DFW Metro. It doesn't get used much anymore. But at the time, we had it was on talk group two, and it could be on time slot one or it could be on time slot two. And it's different on different repeaters. We have about 15 or 16 repeaters on the network in the Dallas, Fort Worth, North Texas area. So, and they're not all programmed the same. So some of them use time slot one for local. Some of them use time slot two for local. So again, you should go to radioid.net and see if that information is there. And if it's not there, you should reach out to uh, the repeater owner and just say, hey, which time slot and which talk group number do you suggest for using local traffic and local traffic is basically defined as it doesn't go over the network it doesn't go over brandmeister it doesn't go over the sea bridge uh, it might go over the sea bridge i'm not going to get into that right now but it's basically you can have you can have a local talk group that's repeater only and that's generally talk group nine so you can have a local so you can program time slot two talk group nine and when you key up that talk group on the repeater it doesn't get spit out of the internet it just uses it as like a local standalone repeater so everybody in the area can talk to one another without going out over the internet the other way to do that this metro talk group we used to have we had all of the local the 15 or 16 repeaters in dallas fort worth connected together and we would we used to call it local but it was really kind of more of a metroplex talk group that's why we called it metro so you could do repeater only talk groups and talk group nine, or you could do a local Metroplex talk group on talk group two. Again, this is all designated by the repeater owner. So some repeater owners, uh, Brandmeister repeater owners, a lot of times will put time slot one, connect it to Brandmeister, and they'll use time slot two for local traffic only. So only one time slot is actually getting spit out over the internet and used on the network. And the other time slot is for local traffic. Sometimes that local traffic is connected to other repeaters in the area and sometimes that local traffic is just standalone that repeater only so that is that determination is usually made by the person who owns the repeater the club who owns the repeater the repeater trustee of some sort and that kind of thing so that's the that's the type of thing you want to do there and then if you um i can't really show this on the screen right now we're gonna have to get a a way for me to add a second camera on here guys because if you want to use this, I can go in there and I can go into settings here. Okay. And I can go to channel set, do this backwards. And I can add a new channel and I can input the name, the number. I can call it a name. I can do, um, I can choose the, that's choosing the zone. And then it adds it to the zone. And then I can go back into settings and go into edit and edit the channel and tell it to use time slot one or two. Tell it to use the talk group number that you've just gotten from the repeater owner and tell it, you know, all the other parameters, the, uh, the timeout timer, power rating and all that kind of good stuff. So lots of great videos on this channel, on Bridgecom's channel for how to program and edit the AnyTone radios by hand from the front panel. You can do it from the from the CPS also. You can do it from the from the computer and the CPS also. That's not a problem. Uh, but the great thing, in my opinion, the great thing about the AnyTone radios is they're so easy to program from the front panel. 
So you, t you get a big code plug, you get the ultra code plug from Bridgecom or you get a code plug from a friend or, or wherever you get a code or build it yourself. You got this big code plug and you shoot it in the radio. Great. You go out into the field, you're talking to some people and they're like, Hey, we just added a new talk group to this repeater. Or maybe this repeater just went up and you didn't know about it. Okay. And you get on the front panel of your radio and you start programming stuff and you enter it there and then you're done. You don't have to plug it back into the computer go through the whole code plug, set up everything with a keyboard if you're out in the field. So that's the that's one of the great things that's about this radio is that it's very easy to, what's called FPP, front panel programmable. It's very easy to FPP the radio, add edit channels, change talk groups on channels. I have recently started setting up my code plug where I set up two channels per repeater. So I'll set up one channel, like say there's a repeater in Dallas, Texas. I'll sh set up the frequency for Dallas, frequency and color code for Dallas, Texas. And I'll set up, Channel one will be time slot one. And then I'll go in there and I'll create a second channel. I'll go frequency color code for Dallas, Texas. Channel two is time slot two. And then on the Anytone radios, it's easy to go in there and just change talk groups. So I can go, I say, this channel's on time slot one. Okay. I can go in there and set it to that talk group, go and talk on it. I can go to times and then I can turn the knob, change it to time slot two, change the talk group at random, ad hoc right here on the screen. And I can change talk groups all day long. And it's easy to use that way. So one of the great things about the AnyTone radios is that it's so easy to edit, so easy to program from the front panel, edit channels, add new channels, and all that kind of stuff. So that is, so the best, um, looking at the chat here. Afternoon. Thanks for everybody for joining. Is there a plus giveaway? I have my info filled in in the discord link toby's asking if there's a giveaway there is a giveaway we're going to do it here in about yeah we're going to do it here in about 10 minutes or so so yeah they're giving away a uh, an ht today uh any tone uv878 uv2 plus so check the check the link they'll, they'll share that link here in the chat here and again it's it's up at the top you guys should pin that link to the to the top of the chat in, in uh in youtube hey david's in the chat Good, uh, good afternoon or good morning, David. How are you today? So that's, uh, so that's how you should, uh, you should program. You should, you should really reach out to the repeater owner, find out what local traffic is used on time slot talk group and use that information to put into your code plug or just manually program into your radio. And again, if you don't know how to manually program in the radio, manually program the AnyTone radios, lots of excellent videos on the bridgecom channel that show you how to do that so there uh i'm being told the link is in the description of this video as well which makes sense and they just uh they just relinked the giveaway in the chat as well so uh i'm pretty much ready to take questions guys if y'all want to do like a q a type thing i mean that was short and sweet i hope i didn't go too quickly again i'm nervous because this is my first time on youtube so <laughs> so i uh i I wanted to kind of go through everything and make sure I talked about radioid.net, how you register, and then talked about uh, local repeater programming. Uh, let's see. I find it hard to hard from digital to go to a simplex analog radio. Oh yeah, well, yeah. Will DMR IDs be assigned on the site during the ham fest? Uh, doubt it. Doubt it. Will DMR IDs be assigned on the site during the ham fest? Do you mean during Dayton ham fest? And do you mean like if you get online and, and register? Because the guys, the guy in charge of Glenn, the guy in charge of radioid.net has been at Dayton the last two years. We actually had a ham fest in Dayton, but there's more admins than just him. So a lot of those guys are, are out of the country. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't know the answer to that but I assume that they will be because there's not just one guy doing that. That's my best guess for that. So, all right. So what talk group are you usually monitoring? I don't, Eric, I, if you're talking to me, I am usually monitoring 3148 Texas statewide. Okay. That's my, but I, I, I monitor the R finder talk group, which is 31770 sometimes. And I monitor, what else? There's another one I monitor. I can't remember the talk group. There's an all, uh, I'm sorry. There's a POTA talk group on Brandmeister now. I got on there a couple of times. They just talk about, hey, I'm activating POTA. 
cool. <laughs> it's going to be a great thing. So, yeah. But yeah, you guys, uh, you guys in the background, um, y'all see more questions, just throw them up there. I can see it on the, on the screen here. Uh, yep. Does the front panel programming eventually end up on the computer as part? Yes. Yes, it does. That's a great question. I should have said that. Okay. So, and I've said this a hundred times on my channel and I'm, I'm assuming that the, the guys from Bridgecom have said it a bunch too. So Eric, the answer to that question is yes, it does. So what you would want to do, if you have a code plug and you shoot it in the radio and then you make a bunch of edits and changes on the front panel, the next time you're in front of your computer, you're going to want to plug in your radio, read the code plug that's in here because it's different than the one you shot in that's saved on your computer right now. Read the code plug in here and save it to a different name. Okay, and once you do that, now you have two code plugs. You have the original one and you have the new edited one that you edited from the front panel. So always read your code plug first and save it to a different name than the previous code plug you've put in the radio. And the reason for that is because if you're like me, if you're like me and you really enjoy tinkering with stuff and, and you like to break stuff, which is what I like to do, you're going to foobar that code plug one of these days. It's just going to happen. I mean, you know, you put something in, you read something, you use N0 GSG and you put a comment in the wrong place and it everything. Uh, well, hey, guess what? That's okay. I screwed up this code plug. I still have my code plug from yesterday or from last week under a different name because I'm not saving over the na same file name over and over again. I'm saving under a different name each time. I suggest saving under today's date. Save it as, what is today? March 4th. Hey, may the 4th be with you. Uh, I save it under today's date, May 4th, 2022. Yet one yesterday was saved under yesterday's date, last week, last week day, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that way you've always got a backup. Okay. But yes, to answer the question, Eric, yes, that is exactly what you would you would have to read from the radio so that it it reads into the CPS with all the information you've got and save that file under a different name. Don't overwrite your original code plug, save it under a different name so that now you've got two code plugs hopefully with today's date, so you can kind of keep them straight. That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. <laughs> if I have Pystar working, is there a reason to also get a SkyBridge? Well, SkyBridge runs on Pystar. So Pystar is an, is a, Pystar is, I say Pystar is an app, uh, is an operating system. It's really not. It's an application that runs on top of, of Raspbian or whatever they're calling it these days. Um, yeah, on, on the Raspberry Pi OS. Um, so PyStar is an application that runs for digital voice modes and there's multiple hotspots out there that use PyStar. So there's not much, not going to be much difference between the sky, assuming you have a dual time slot hotspot and a dual band hotspot hotspot, because you can get hotspots that run on PyStar that will work on time slot one and two, or you can get them just to work on times on one time slot, which is usually two. Or you can get them dual band that'll work on two meter for 40, or you can get a mono band. Okay, so the SkyBridge is dual band, it's dual time slot. And the great thing about the SkyBridge is that if you ever have trouble, you can call Bridgecom. They're in the USA, they're easy to work with, and they'll, they'll support your purchase there. But to answer your question honestly, if you have PyStar already, the, the SkyBridge is going to be very similar to what you currently have if you have dual band and dual time slot on your current PyStar. So, but PyStar is just an OS and it's on a lot of different, different, uh, hot spots out there. David asks, does the Bridgecom hotspot automatically update the DMR database? That's a good question. I'm not sure on that, guys. Y'all might want to put on there. Yeah. I'm not sure if that does... I want to say that's done manually in Pystar. I could be wrong about that. I'm pretty sure that's done manually in PyStar. You guys can tell me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, you guys posted an APRS question. Put that back up there. Paul says, I saved my edited code plug to a work file. Then after testing, I name it the radio model and date like DV. That's exactly what I do, Paul. Yeah, I name it the radio model underscore and, and today's date. That's exactly what I do. So there's not a wrong way to do it. That's just how I do it. So, yeah, uh, is the 878 UV2 cross band compatible? Cross, oh, cross band repeat? No, no, it doesn't do cross band repeat. 
Nico says Pristar runs a cron job to update DMRID database and during the update as well, if I remember correctly. You know, I know the open spot does that. I couldn't remember if Pistar does that, but I I I bet you're I bet you're right. I bet you're right for that. Okay. Will the 578 plus mobile do APRS tracking on channel two while I talk on channel one? I th think so. I think so. I'm not 100% sure on that. I think so. I think once you unkey while you're talking on channel one, once you unkey, it'll kick in. I think. That's usually how most dual band radios with APRS work, APRS send and receive, which the 578, the latest version of the 578 does have the plus version, I believe. Yeah, 578 plus, you said that. The 578 plus does have transmit and receive on analog APRS. So I believe that it will do that between transmissions if you're talking on the other channel. Somebody somebody wants to correct me on that, they can, but I'm pretty, pretty sure that's correct. Do you use multiple hotspots in your shack? I plead the fifth on that. <laughs> I have multiple hotspots in here, but usually, okay, so here's, here's an important thing. Don't fire up multiple hotspots if your hotspots all have the same DMR mode or digital mode. Okay, I have multiple hotspots running, but one is on... DMR, one is on Fusion, and sometimes I'll have a D-Star one. I don't have a D-Star one running right now. Um, don't fire up a DMR hotspot, more than one DMR hotspot, if it's on the same frequency and color code, okay? Because that's how you create the, uh, what's it called? The echo effect, where you throw out your call sign, and then it, sits in, and it keeps throwing out your call sign over and over again. It's because the Pi Star, this Pi Star transmits, and this one receives, and then it flips, and it just keeps doing this number. You hear that on brand. I don't want to be rude here. I used to hear that on Brandmeister a lot on one of the talk groups I used to listen to. I don't listen to that talk group anymore, so I haven't heard it in a long time. Maybe it's there. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Okay. But the way you get that loop is to have two hotspots, both on DMR, both on the same frequency, and you key up your radio and it keys both of them. Don't do that. So, uh, uh, Let's see. All right, guys, are y'all um, ready for the giveaway? I, I show 11.32. Yeah, infinite loop for the win, right. Uh, I just activated my Skybridge. It shows no call. Into, uh, I do have a Wi-Fi. Will it connect over my internet hotspot? Yeah, so the easiest way to do that, William, is to plug... Temporarily, plug the Pi Star into your Ethernet router, log into it, and then do a scan for your Wi-Fi and add your Wi-Fi network to Pi Star, save it, reboot it, unplug it from Ethernet, and then let it plug in, and then and then it'll connect to Wi-Fi, and you can log in via browser that way. Um, that's it's a multi-step process, but um, but yeah, and then you have the the uh, no call that that no call one two three four five six seven means you haven't put your own subscriber ID in there yet. So and that's normal. That's how they all come. So you just want to you just want to get um, that set up correctly. That's the easiest way to do it. Plug it into Ethernet, scan for Wi-Fi connect, and then use it on Wi-Fi from then on out. So is Don VK one D O N here? Victor Kilo one Australian Don. <laughs> Victor Kilo one, D O N. Don one is uh standard. He's the standard winner. Okay, if he's here, I guess. Okay, uh, Don Don's locks. Uh, I think the any tone is is not a superhead. Is that true? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's direct conversion. Michael. When you set the hotspot with the two-digit DMRID suffix, okay, okay. Do you need to change your DMRID on the radio? Also, no, no, you don't. You don't need to change the DMRID 
on the radio. Think of a hotspot like a repeater, okay? So if I put up a repeater under my call sign and my ID, you can key it up and a hundred other people in the area can key it up also with your radio, which has your subscriber ID in it, okay? It doesn't matter how the the ID of the repeater and the hotspot is how that hotspot identifies on the network. It doesn't matter who keys it up after that. So no, you don't have to change anything on your code plug, on your radio, nothing like that. The reason these one and two digits post the DMR ID on the hotspot, the reason they're doing that now, they started that a couple of years ago, is because people have multiple hotspots and they'd have one in the car and one at their beach house and one at their home and one upstairs and one downstairs. They'd have all these hotspots on the network. Well, when they all had the same ID, it would cause conflicts because a DMR ID is somewhat like an IP address. So you can add 010203 if you have multiple hotspots on the network, but that does not affect your uh, ID that you use in the radio at all. So no, you don't have to do that. Uh, okay, so yeah, Don won the, oh, that's Don's locks. VK, oh, there we go. Okay, I didn't put two and two together on that. Hey, congrats, Don. There we go. Don's Don's a good dude. He's in my live streams a lot. So Don, <laughs> there's a there's a thing on my channel called Don, hashtag Don Army because I got like four or five Dons that watch my my channel. It's it's kind of a funny thing. All right, so Michael KF six UV won the eight seven eight UV uh, UV two plus. Today's winners are Don VK one Don. And the BC Plus Anytone winner is Michael KF6 UV. So I'm not seeing him in the chat, but I assume he's there if you guys are announcing the winner. So good deal. Awesome. Hey, giving away stuff is always fun. It's always fun. <laughs> so any other questions in there? I might have missed one. I thought I saw one up there a minute ago. Ben, you said you were giving away an 878. Didn't say to just plus members. There's two giveaways. Again, this is my first time on YouTube. Okay, so forgive me. I, I misspoke. There was one giveaway to the general public and an, a second giveaway to uh, BridgeCom Plus University or B BridgeCom Plus members. So Don won the first one, won the general one, and Michael won the BridgeCom Plus. That's more fun if you win. That's true. That's true. All right, guys. Any other questions at all? Anything about... Uh, so if I can key up, why is there a private and public mode then? So if anyone can key up, why is there a private and public mode then? Private and public mode. So if you're talking about private and public talk groups when you say mode, um, you can... You can enter a private ID, which is a subscriber ID, which my ID is private, your ID is private. You can enter a person's ID, which is called private, and talk directly to that person rather than talking to a talk group over the repeater. Okay, so that I don't know if that's what you're talking about. Uh, and clar uh, clarify what your question is there. I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't quite get that. Uh, Jay Mohan, are you going to be back? Yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back next week. Uh, can we speak to other users one-on-one? -on -one? Can I dial in an individual ID? Yes, you can. Yes, yeah, you can speak to other. You can do, if they put your ID, that you create a channel, and instead of putting the talk group ID, like talk group number 3148, you put their ID in that channel and just name that channel Jason, KC5HWB, and then you put my ID in that channel for the talk group number, and then they do the same thing for you, and then you can talk back and forth to one another. Uh, tomorrow, BridgeCom will be hosting another live stream at 11 a.m. Central Time with host Adam Wolf, and it's a, another Ask Me Anything stream. So that's tomorrow. So they do these streams on Wednesday, and they do a second stream on Thursday. Where do you get new contacts from? You can <clears throat> you can download the contact database directly from radioid.net. It will do a what's called a database dump, and you can 
throw that into your um, code plug. There's multiple ways to do that. You can just download it and do it manually, manually add it to your AnyTone code plug. There's also a contact generator on radioid.net. I think it's a subscription service that's like five or $10 a year. It's not very much, but it will generate a contact code plug for you. And you just go in there and you fill out the form. And one of those forms is what radio you're using and you select your radio and then it'll generate a file and you download it. And then you can update it like every day if you want to, every week, whatever, however often you want to. But radioid.net is where you get new contacts from. <laughs> there we go. KF, KF6 UV is still here. Did I really actually win? Yes, you did, sir. Yes, you did. Okay, you guys threw up another question a minute ago. Is there something? Uh, okay, yeah, we're ready for the wrap-up. Yeah, that's cool. We can do that. Adams, is Adam going to come on here? Yeah, there we go. Hey. Hey, guys. Looking What's up? forward to tomorrow to answering your questions. So if anyone, you know, please come in and check it out. out. Uh, look forward to answering them. Yeah. In the, uh, any, ask me anything. That's kind of a neat idea to do for a, for a DMR channel. So. Okay. Good deal. Hey guys. Well, thank you for being here today. I'm trying to read, uh, trying to read through the chats here, see if I missed anything. Uh, hey, thanks Aaron. Appreciate you being here to get today. And uh, yeah, if you, those of you watching uh, if on the after play on what we call team replay, anybody who's watching that, uh, put your comments in the YouTube channel below or the YouTube comments below on this episode. And I'm sure Bridgecom will will be reviewing those as well. So uh, very special thanks to everybody. And uh, if that's all that uh, that you guys have, let me know if I need to say anything else and then we'll go. I think we're probably good so <laughs> yeah yeah cool thanks guys appreciate uh, appreciate your support in the chat appreciate everybody being here and uh thanks for the questions it's always fun to answer questions especially about dmr so um we'll uh we'll see you next time y'all have a good one in 73 Y'all have anything else? I think we're good. That was a good run. Uh, I think you did.